This week, we're going to be talking about the spiritual discipline of prayer. Prayer is maybe the most misunderstood spiritual discipline because many of us don't know how to do it right because we don't even understand what it is. Now, growing up for me, there were two very specific times that I experienced uh, engaging in prayer. One was before bed, the other was before every meal, and most of that was God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen, <laughs> right? Pretty simple, and I'm not sure that I really understood what was going on. Uh, that was part of my daily life, though. It was just something that I did. It was something that was just ingrained in who we were as a family. But I didn't really understand what it was. I thought it was like I take my requests to God, I, I tell him how I'm doing, I let him know how everything's going with me, and I ask him for the things that I need, right? That's what prayer was to me. And, and maybe even some of you now misunderstand what prayer is and might see it something like you tell God that he's good which we should, right? Or asking God for things, which is also good. That's a good thing. Uh, or maybe, again, just keeping God informed about what we're thinking, as if he didn't know already, right? Um, or maybe just general communication with God. Now, why those things are somewhat true, it's not the full view of what prayer actually is. So what is prayer? Well, first of all, Prayer is an expectation from God, right? And I know for some people uh, that makes it almost seem like something that they don't want to do if it's an expectation. But God expects that his people will want to communicate with him, will want to bring their requests to him. It is an ongoing expectation and it's a normal part of our walk with God. A couple scriptures that I'll share with you. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2, Paul says that we should continue steadfastly, or that means like committedly, in prayer. First Thessalonians 5 17, Paul says pray without ceasing. So it's an expectation that our life will be guided by prayer. This is part of what it is to walk in Christ. You can't separate prayer from the life of a believer in Jesus. You just can't. It's part of it. It's ingrained in it. Uh, that would be like saying that a basketball player can be a basketball player and never shoot the ball, right? It's part of what you do. Um, that would be like saying that it, a runner can be a runner and never run, right? That's not, that's not possible. The idea of us following Jesus is really dependent on our prayer life. We have to be communicating with God. Many people might actually say they have a relationship with God, but if there's no communication, what kind of relationship is it actually? So one of the questions we need to start asking ourselves is, do I expect that prayer should be a normal part of my everyday life? Not only is it an expectation, but it is an activity, right? It is something that we do. And sometimes growing up in church, this is where it gets hard for us because we will hear the truth of the gospel saying that it's not anything that we do that makes us right with God. That is true. Ephesians uh, 2, Paul very clearly says it's by grace that we are saved, not by works. And it's also true that we won't complete our own righteousness in the flesh. However, Paul does say things like continue steadfastly, or there is the idea that we strive for holiness as God works that holiness in us as well. So there's sort of a marriage of our responsibility to respond to what God has done, and yet God's grace that carries us along. But prayer is active. It is an action. It is something that we do. We are told by Jesus to ask, seek, and knock. And we'll be looking at that scripture in our small groups tonight. Asking, seeking, knocking. Those are actions. Those are things that we do. We pursue Jesus. We pursue the relationship with God that he's graciously given us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? It's a blessing to be able to pursue that relationship. The reality is that prayer is the activity of us seeking increasing relationship with God with an expectation that he will meet with us, he will hear us, and he will engage with us. Prayer is the action of our relationship with God, right? It's also the language of our relationship with God because it is all about relationship. Think about your closest friends, right? Do you talk to your closest friends? Of course you do. How weird would it be if you went up to someone in your school or in your neighborhood that you never talked to and said, man, I'm so glad we are such great friends. They probably think that you were crazy, 
right? They would think, wait a minute, there's, there's no relationship here. We've barely ever talked, right? Relationship is predicated or built on the idea that there's some sort of communication. So when we say that we have a relationship with God, we need to be sure that we're communicating with him. At one point, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I tell you to do, right? The idea there is why, why would we say that Jesus is Lord if we're not willing to respond to him and engage with him in relationship? It's preposterous. The idea that we have a relationship with a God that we never communicate with is silly. And so we need to be sure that uh, bef before we ground ourselves in saying, oh no, I know Jesus, that we're actually interested in communicating with the Savior that we say that we love, right? Our prayer life is a direct window to the quality of our relationship with God, which means if it doesn't exist, we have a lot to think about, right? Our prayer is a picture of what our relationship with God looks like. It's, it's almost like a survey of the health of our relationship with God. And so right now, I just want you to ask yourself the question. If someone were to view my prayer life on a weekly basis, would they be able to tell that I know God? That's a good question for us to ask ourselves. Unfortunately, so many people think that it's possible to have a relationship with Jesus and yet not have any expectation for knowing him deeper through the word and engaging with him in ongoing communication in the discipline of prayer. So what is it that keeps people from praying constantly, as Paul has asked, right? Maybe you're a person who you pray, but it's very um, sparse, right? It's here and there. And when you pray, you're not exactly sure what to pray for, right? You're, you just sort of sit there thinking, I'm not even sure what to say or what to ask. What keeps us from praying consistently? Well, number one, we just aren't serious about it. Right? The, the number one thing that keeps people from praying consistently is that they're not serious about prayer, right? If, if something is important to you, you'll do it. We talked about that last week. When you value something, you'll use it, you'll do it. The number one reason is that we just don't value prayer. It's just not important to us. And again, that's a false idea. That's a false assumption that we make. Thinking that we can have a relationship with God and yet not be praying, that doesn't make sense. Number two, we don't intentionally plan for it. This is where I think a lot of people land. This has been my issue through my life really is not intentionally setting aside time making time for communication with God. Now, yes, Paul does say that we should pray constantly. The expectation is that we should not, ne never cease praying, that we should pray always. But um, that has to be cultivated. And one great way to cultivate that is, is to make sure that you set aside uh, intentional time to pray, to get with God and express these things to him. We do the things that we think are valuable, right? We'll set aside the time for it, which means that many people who say they belong to God don't really value the relationship with God as much as they think or they say they do, right? Ouch. And think about this. If you have an activity that you love or something that you're trying to get better at, you don't mind putting in the practice, right? If there's someone that you really admire as a friend, you want to spend time with them. You'll make the time to spend with them. If there's someone that you're eyeing for some sort of love interest or you have like a crush on them, you would have no problem setting aside the time to hang out with them if the opportunity made itself available, right? That's true. So the question is, why aren't we intentionally setting aside time for God? Again, it comes back to the idea of the value of the relationship. Number three, we might doubt it would change anything. Some of us have maybe tried to pray and we've experienced something that's really uncomfortable and maybe you've prayed for something and you've never been answered or you have thought that God has not answered the way that you wanted him to or even given you an indication that he's listening, right? Many people don't make prayer a priority because they doubt that it will actually change anything. Ultimately, many people have a hard time praying because we don't think anything will come from it. But that's a direct result of not spending enough time in the word. You see how these two go together? The more you know God through his word, the more you count on him to fulfill his promises, the more you'll make that time, the more you'll value that God really does follow through with his promises. He really is listening and he really is responding. Number four is the big one, right? We never really learned. Prayer has to be learned. 
Jesus had to teach his disciples to pray, right? They had to learn how to pray from him. We need to do that as well. So how do we learn how to pray? First of all, you try it, right? You don't just uh, sit around and wait for the opportunity. You try it. You pray. As awkward as it might be at first, you go to God and you present your requests to him. Um, sometimes we'll use uh, the acronym ACTS, right? Adoration, which means you go to God and tell him how great he is. Confession. You confess your sins before God. You tell him all the things that you've done that week and the ways that your mind has been away from him. And you repent and you ask that your relationship be restored. T is Thanksgiving. You just tell God what you're thankful for. And there are lots of things to be thankful for. If you've never written down a list, now is a good time. And S is supplication. Supplication just generally means asking God for the things that he already knows that you need. So you ask those things. That's a very easy way for us to structure together what it looks like to pray. So try it. Number two, get into scripture. Because knowing God will inform how you engage with him. You'll know better what to ask if you know God's word. You can never go wrong asking for the things that God has already told you to ask for. Number three is pray with other people. This is super uncomfortable for many of us, especially when you're young, but it's good practice to pray with other people. Remember, nobody else is trying to judge what you're praying. If we all realize that we're all connecting with God at the same time in prayer, then it's a lot more relaxing for us to just be able to say what's on our mind and to let the Holy Spirit take over. God has promised to answer our prayers according to his perfect will and to teach us to trust his character and draw from his grace that we humbly ask him for all we need. Prayer, in short, is this. It's trusting God enough to ask and loving him enough to listen. So take some time in your small groups tonight to talk about these things. I've got a few questions for you. And please, at the end of your small group time, engage in prayer. We'll see you soon.